Galatians chapter number 5 and verse number 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I was blessed by God to be born in the United States of America. I will not apologize for that blessing, nor will I renounce it or step back from it. My, This country, we have enjoyed more freedom than any other country. I know we're a long way from God, but I say, in my opinion, she's still the best country on the planet. As a veteran of the United States Navy, as a former law enforcement officer, I swore an oath to uphold uh, the laws that gave us our freedom, and I have not unswore it till this day. But as we come to our text, Paul writing to the churches at Galatia says in verse number 1 stand fast therefore in the, what's this phrase? The liberty. He is not talking about a country or national liberty. He is talking about something that is greater than that. The word the is a definite article. It puts whatever comes behind it in a class all by itself. So this liberty is like no other liberty. The liberty spoken of here in verse number one is of course Christian liberty. Now I'm married to a school teacher and I'm going to school teacher preach for just a few minutes on Christian liberty. There's not anything else like it. But I was born on a mill hill. So somewhere before I get to the end you'll probably hear this. Christian liberty ain't nothing like it. I'm going to preach a few minutes on Christian liberty. There ain't nothing like it. Look at the verse. He said, stand uh, therefore, stand fast therefore. I'm telling you, I see the stand of Christian liberty. Look at the positive stand of Christian liberty. He said, stand fast, stand firm, stand in your place. That carries the idea of I will not be moved, uh, I will not be shaken, uh, I will not back up, I'll not go to the left or the right and when I was a little kid growing up we used to get in a fight we'd draw a line in the sand and we'd say I dare you to step over that line they'd step over that line we'd step back and we'd draw another line we'd say I dare you to step over that line they'd step over that line then we'd draw that third line and if we said, I did double dog dare you to step over that line, if you stepped over that line, you was going to get punched in the mouth because we had did double dog dared you. And I'm afraid that too many of God's people have drawn a line and stepped back and drawn a line and stepped back. But Paul said, draw a line in the sand and did double dog dare anybody to step over it. I am not going to be moved. Those old Roman soldiers would drive spikes or nails in the bottom three the bottom of their sandals, their war shoes and when they were told to hold the line when they were told to stand fast they'd rather their feet up and they'd drive them in the ground and they would not be moved help us tonight to determine as the people of God that we're going to stand fast come what may we shall not be moved the positive of our stand but I want you to see the position of our stand. He said stand fast therefore, look at this little word in the liberty. I served in the United States Navy and I stood for this country. I stand for the flag, uh, but I don't stand for Christian liberty. I stand in it, not for it. In other words, I don't have to defend this liberty. I defend that flag. I defend this country. And when I was a policeman, I defended my community. But I don't have to defend this liberty. I don't even have to die for this liberty. What Paul said is just delight in it. Just rejoice in it. Just enjoy it. Hallelujah. I'm glad, thank God, uh, that he saved me and I ain't never got over it. He set me free and I like it. I don't like being in bondage. I don't like to be under somebody's thumb. I don't like to be under the wrong ruler. I like being free and I'm going to stand right here in the freedom God's given me and just enjoy. It. Said, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. Not only do I see the stand of Christian liberty, I want us to see the source 
of Christian liberty. He says, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith, here he is, Christ. The person that is the source of our liberty. You notice Paul called him Christ. That's, that's his messianic name in the New Testament. He's the only one anointed of God. Isaiah said uh, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon him and he will set at liberty the captives. I'm glad, thank God, that Christ is like no other. Nobody else could be Christ. Christ had to be able to come down, uh, get in the hog pen of sin where I was, uh, waller around down there with me uh, be touched with the feelings of my infirmities bear my sins in his own body and sin not taint him he could reach down uh, and yeah, I know where God found me he had to reach way down thank God his arm is not shortened that it cannot save uh, neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear but he got way down right in the pit of sin where I was and sin didn't touch him sin didn't rub off on him sin didn't pollute him and he reached down because he was 100% man and he got me by the head and he sacrificed his body and bore my sins and he shed his blood but being Christ meaning he wasn't just 100% man he is 100% God he could reach all the way back up in the third heaven and he could get a hold of a thrice holy God by the head and he could take a no account low down hell deserving sinner by the head and he could make a breach between me and a thrice holy. I don't know if that's a helping you tonight but it's a helping me to know that Christ made a breach and he reconciled us together. He put my hand in his hand. I thank God for Christ Jesus. He's the person, the source of this liberty. What's this next phrase? He said we're with Christ. Don't miss this. Hath made us free not only do I see the person in the source but I see the power in the source see I didn't have anything to do with him I didn't get set free I didn't set myself free I didn't pull myself up by the bootstraps and turn over enough leaves uh, Christ came and did a work at Calvary that broke every chain that throwed open every cell door uh, that loosed me from not only praise God have I been loose from the shackles not only have I been set loose from the prison but I don't bear the burden anymore he paid all the debt uh, he wiped the slate clean uh, he took and put his righteousness on me. I know we don't like to look at it, but when God looks at us, he doesn't see us for who we were. He doesn't even see us for who we are. He sees us clothed in the righteousness. I can go free because I'm clothed in his righteousness. He did it. He Well, I don't like what he did with you. Well, lump it, dump it, bump it, stop it, do whatever you want to do to it, but get over it because I didn't do this. He did. I wanted to be a policeman I'd have wound up in hell without God but thank God he came uh, and found me just in time see I was sitting six pews back on the preacher's right hand side I went to church that morning to go to a family reunion not to hear the gospel I'd been raised in church all my life I'd heard all that I didn't have it on my mind I had fried chicken, banana pudding, watermelon and pick up baseball now my man of God's hair was hanging down his face he had done been preaching about an hour he's about half finished he is running up and down the aisle jumping on pews screaming and yelling pointing that long three foot finger in everybody's face I was over there said if you want to answer my prayer Lord uh, let this man stop the chicken's getting cold uh, they gonna cut the watermelon without us won't be no banana but honest I'm telling the truth and all of a sudden in bondage in sin carrying the guilt of my uh, wrong the guilt of my filthiness and unrighteousness sitting six pews back he is about halfway down the aisle still preaching like a wild man Holy Ghost stepped right in the middle of that six pew pulled the blinders off my eyes now I come from a poor white trash side of town I knew I was a sinner but I didn't know I was one like that I'd heard all my life Jesus was a savior but I never had seen him before like that didn't nobody listen I'm going to testify and set out didn't nobody sing 16 stanzas of just as I 
them. They didn't tell a horror story. Nobody looked over and said, I believe God's dealing with you. Wouldn't you like to come? Please come. Wouldn't you come? Come. Please come. Didn't nobody do any of that. I got up, kicked pocketbooks out of the way, stepped over legs, made my way to an old-fashioned altar. My man of God's still at the back of the building preaching. I didn't go up a Romans road. I didn't go through a Philippian jail. I didn't go up an Ephesian highway. I just said, Lord, save me. And I didn't nobody come down and say, well, if you prayed this prayer. No. I jumped up while he's preaching and said, Pastor, he saved me. He saved me. He saved me. And I ain't saved by feelings. I'm saved by grace through faith. But I'm feeling mighty saved tonight. I know the burden's been lifted. I know the guilt is gone. I know my sins have been washed away. Where are they? I don't know. But I know they're gone. I'm brand new. I was there when he set me free. When he made me free. I was there when he loosed me. I'm like Lazarus when he called him from the grave. He came out with all them grave clothes on. And Jesus looked at him and said, Loose him. And let him go. When they cut Lazarus loose, they didn't have to get the praise band up to sing his favorite song. Didn't nobody have to come over and tell him that he had been set free. Didn't nobody have to tell him that he ought to thank God for it. I believe old Lazarus was like a racehorse, thoroughbred, clogged up, hung up behind the gate, uh, snorting or uh, waiting on the gate to fall. And when they cut him loose, uh, he went to jumping and a shouting uh, and a praising God. You say, how you know? Because I know how it is to be dead. I know how it is to be wrapped up in all them grave clothes and God come along and birthed you to new life and cut you loose. I've been made free. I've been loosed uh, and let go. I'm a brand new man. I'm free. I'm free indeed I'm loose I'm standing fast in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made me free I didn't have a thing to do with it he did all the work the stand of Christian liberty the source of Christian liberty I'll give you this one I'm finished the strategy of Christian liberty he said and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage be not entangled again I believe what the strategy of Christian liberty is is stay away from the problem all that to give you a fit don't go back to it don't go back and get all mixed up in it the best way I can tell you this entangled when I was a young boy, I had an uncle who had rabbit dogs. Anybody know what rabbit dogs are? And I used to love to hear him talk to them rabbit dogs. He'd turn them things loose. And he knew by the way they yapped when they had jumped one. He knew which yap was which dog and had one to jump them and one to run them and one to bark. They had, I mean, he knew. He knew. I'd go with him. I'd go with him hunting a lot. When I first went, I was a bird hunter. I didn't care nothing about rabbit hunting. I just liked to hear him talk to them dogs. I wished I could do it. I'd do it, but they'd get to going, hey, 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 they'd get to, them beagles get to talking back to him. Well, I got so excited and so caught up in it. I was young. You know what I got to thinking? I was one of them dogs. They had jump a rabbit, and he said, she's got one jump. I'd take off with him. 12 gauge, uh, 12 gauge shotgun and all I'd run through the woods behind them every once in a while well, I'd, I'd hear him before one of them would yap he'd say that's old Lucy I'd yap. I'd say, he'd say that's old Bill that's old Buck he knew him by the yap I'd yap every once in a while myself he'd say that's old Sid tell me that he'd say that's old Sid <laughs> I thought I was a dog I'd run with them. I'd run through the briars I'd run through all them woods I'd come out cut up and I found out now I found out Wherever they jump that rabbit, if you'll stay right there, 
He'll make a circle back. You kill a bunch of rabbits without moving. But when I was young, and one day they jumped a rabbit, they went to yapping and hollering. I got excited and I took off. I was a running with them. I was a yapping with them. I mean, I was stride for stride with them. And all of a sudden, I stepped off in a briar patch and failed. I was trying to keep that. Now, some of y'all know shotguns. I know at 12 gauge over and under Ithaca. I was trying to keep it out of the briar patch and them boogers reached up and went around my arm, around my head, around my legs and it seemed like the more I struggled, uh, the more uh, they grabbed on to me and I finally realized that I couldn't get loose. So in between the yaps, I yelled, Daddy! Daddy! He said, are you all right, son? I said, I need you bad. He said, keep calling. I'm following your voice. Daddy! Daddy! Finally, he come down there and he looked at me all tangled up in them briars. And my daddy was a hard man. But I don't remember him ever saying anything negative. I don't remember him fussing at me. I just remember he got that behind that prize shotgun. Of course, he sold it the next day and uh, put that thing down. And he came back over and he pulled his pocket knife out. And he started cutting all them briars off of me. And he finally got them all cut off of me. And he reached down and picked me up. I was about 12 years old. I'm 53 tonight. I ain't never yapped with them dogs. I ain't never run through the woods. I ain't never been tangled up. You know how to stay from being tangled up in the prayers? Don't run with the dogs. Don't yap with the dogs. Don't go back to where he cut me loose out of all of that and I ain't never been back. And the Lord come and cut me loose and lifted me up. I ain't a going back there no more. I'm staying away from the problem then he said be not entangled again what's this with the yoke of bondage I believe it's not only a strategy to stay away from the problem I believe it's a strategy to stay away from the past hey, too many of God's people can't live in the liberty where with Christ it made us free because something happened back there 25 or 30 years ago and you're still all entangled of it and you're still trying to carry that yoke I'm going to tell you this the devil comes up and reminds me of my past I got where I laugh at him I say that's like trying to hurt me by breaking into 380 Van Buren Street over there in Gaffney I ain't lived there in 40 years break into it all you want to because I don't live there anymore so bring all that up from the past you want to I don't live there anymore hallelujah I'm standing fast in the liberty I'm not going to be in that yoke of bondage I'm going to yoke up with the Lord Jesus I heard the story years ago about a missionary who was in a foreign country and he's riding with the national pastor American missionary and they rode by a field one of the nationals was plowing with two oxen. And the, they pulled over to watch him just out there working, plowing the field. And that American missionary watched for a little while. And he said, do you see this? He said, in one side of that yoke, they got this great old big, strong looking ox. He said, in the other side, they got a little old puny ox. He said, what in the world's going on here? They watched a little while and finally... The American missionary said, well, I got it figured out. That big ox is carrying all the burden. He's got all the weight on him. He's pulling all the load. He's doing all the work. And that little ox, he, he really ain't doing nothing. And the na national pastor said, you're exactly right. The only reason that he's even in the yoke is to balance out the yoke so it doesn't drag on the ground and lead the big ox to turn to hunt someone who should be in the another ox that should be in that side said if he if he gets the dragon he'll get to turning wanting to know why where the other ox that's supposed to be in there went that may not mean a whole lot to you but if you ever come by and see me and the lord jesus are working in the father's field i ain't got none to burden on me I know we got a bunch of sad stories to tell and sad songs to sing, but we ain't really carrying no burden. 
We ain't really got no weight on us. We ain't doing, no matter how good you think you can sing, no matter how good you think you can preach, you ain't really doing any of the work. You might be a good preacher and a good singer, but if he don't pull that plow, ain't no ground going to get turned up. And I'm telling you, no wonder he said, come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you for my burdens light. My yoke is easy. Just get in the yoke. Keep it balanced. The big ox will tell you when to step and he'll tell you when to stop. He'll pull the load. He'll carry the weight. He'll be there with you every time. There ain't no need to go back to the past. Just keep walking. Don't get in that yoke of bondage. Don't get tied down. Don't get roped off somewhere else. Let's just stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Christian liberty. There ain't nothing like it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I pray tonight that the Holy Ghost will let you stand right smack dab in the middle of it. It's almost like getting saved all over again tonight. Christian liberty. There ain't nothing like it. Let's bow for prayer. Father, take the truth of your word and the power of the Holy Ghost. If there's someone here in that yoke of bondage, I pray Holy Ghost now. Go to them right now. And pull the blinders off and maybe we yoke up with Jesus and stand fast. Pastor, you come. I want you to look tonight. And I want you to look at me, 2 Timothy chapter 4, and I'll begin reading at verse number 10. Paul said, and I'll read several scriptures, stay with me. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee. Boy, this is a good phrase. For he is profitable to me for the ministry. Boy, that was a good turnaround of the grace of God. Verse number 16, same chapter, and I have my first answer. No man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Then in the book of Hebrews, in chapter number 12, if you would look with me there, and I want to read a few verses. He said, verse 25, See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things which are shaken as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. And then in the book of the Revelation, chapter number 3 and verse number 2, John said, well, the Holy, the Jesus Christ said, he said, be watchful and strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect or complete before God. I want to preach to you tonight on this subject of remaining. I know that this week the, the title of, of the meeting, the theme is be relevant, be revived, and be ready. And I feel tonight if we'll do those three things as God laid on the pastor's heart, thank God we'll be ready to remain. I want to say, you talk about the school. I don't want to tell you where I went to school because it doesn't remain true to what it remained to. But 46 years ago when I graduated, I, I'm sorry to say tonight, I can't brag on some friends that I used to have. I can't brag on some preachers and churches that I used to have because they don't remain true. And I'm not here to be negative, but you can't preach for something without preaching against something else. 
It's not somebody help me. It's not tonight about what just what we're against. I'm sick and tired of folks folks trying to say and trying to write us off. Those folks that still believe the Bible and the truth said you're just against everything. That's not the case. It's because of what we're for. It's because of what we're for. I'm still for the old-fashioned King James Bible. I'm still for Jesus Christ, the only way to heaven. I'm still for the church of the living God. I'm still for traditional biblical marriage. Uh, somebody said uh, traditional marriage. No, biblical marriage. Amen. I'm still for unborn babies. I'm still for the, thank you, Brother Sidney, the star-spangled banner. I'm fine with Jose coming to America as long as he learns to sing Jose can you see think of that a while you'll get it right before you cross the river amen hey I'm for the flag I'm for freedom of speech I'm for the second amendment to protect the first amendment amen I'm for life and liberty and pursuit of happiness I'm for secure borders and I'm still for my president Somebody say amen. amen. By the way, I don't, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I believe God can turn a lot of things around. He still setteth up rulers and kings, amen. And I want us to look tonight, and I want to encourage you for a few minutes to just remain, just remain. <laughs> hey, all God wants us to do, all Shama had to do was just stand in the field. All he had to do was stand in the midst of the peace. God just wants some saints to say, keep remaining. I want to say tonight, we need to be remaining, not retreating. We need to be remaining, not recovering. I don't have anything to recover from. Thank God we got a recovering mission. It's called the Crossroads Rescue Mission in the quiet heart. But bless God, being an old-fashioned Bible-believing, saved from the hell and the pit of sin, washed in the blood, cleansed by His grace, sealed by the Holy Ghost. And you think this pop bedded 68-year-old, half-deaf preacher is going to apologize? You're crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not recovering. I'm not recovering. And excuse me, I ain't got time to argue with them. There's too many souls to be saved. There's too many folks to keep out of hell. Hey, we need to be remaining, not ranting. We need to be remaining, not rebelling. We need to be remaining, not revising. Hey, man, the objective is to remain. To me, because he first loved me. I owe it to him not to retreat and run now. We've come too far. We've seen too many victories. We've sipped the nectar from too many blooms. We've enjoyed the balm in Gilead. We've seen the Lord bring home the grapes of Eskel from the... I want to say we need to remain. Now, if you're going to remain, we need saints of God to remain. Can I just be a pastor a while? When you've been one as long as I have, you can't help it. It breaks out on you like the mumps. Hey Amen. May I just say something to you tonight? I want to say we need some we need some daddies to remain being daddies. We need some mamas to be Bible mamas again. Oh somebody say, let me tell you something. All I'm concerned about in these last days, Brother Buchanan, Brother Scott, Brother Mike. Pastor, and I know I see these young preachers. I can come in here. I see what you're doing here. That's all I need to see. I see it right there. We gotta, we gotta reproduce. If we're gonna keep the old time religion. We gotta reproduce it. And you don't reproduce in it by running from it. You don't change it. You don't take the edge off of it. Don't, for God's sake, don't take the conviction out of it. Ain't nobody going to get saved unless you leave the conviction in it. That, somebody help me. Hey, we can't back up now. Bob, we've come too far, son. We cannot back up now. Hey, you preached the Bible and it's got you in trouble. But you kept preaching and it got you out of it too. Hey, what these boys want is something that's real. I can tell by looking at them. They're just not trying to repeat something from Bible school. Nothing wrong with it. But they're hunting something that's real. And hey, it can be done. 
God's all, hey, there's been generations that's just as compromised, just as lily livered, just as hated, a God hating as they are today. God's always had a remnant that didn't back down. It's proof we're going to remain. It's going to require an affirmation for the which cause. I suffer these things. I suffer these things. I've been beat with rods. I've been left for dead, Paul said. I've been put in prison. Oh, he said, nevertheless, I know in whom I have believed. It. <laughs> if you're going to remain, you've got to know in whom you have believed. It. And then persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed, which I've committed. He's able to keep that. God have mercy. He's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. If you're going to remain in this, you know why Paul remained? I mean, you know why Paul was alone? For all our texts, except for Revelation, Paul tells us he's alone. He's getting ready to die. Alone. Only Luke is with me. Bring the parchments. I'm fixing to leave here. My time of my departure is at hand. You know why he's alone? You know why he's alone? You know why he's alone? Because he remained. Webster, the old 1828. Webster, dictionary. The word remain means to be left after others have withdrawn. I want to say thank God we don't need to be in the withdrawing business. I don't care who it offends. I want to say it requires an affirmation. If you're going to remain today in these days in which we live, you got to believe in something. You got to believe in what you're standing for. You're not going to stay in it if you don't believe in it. Somebody said, Well, I'm recovering. No, I got news for you. I got renewed. You can't recover from anything you ain't never had. So I said, you ought not say things like that. Well, it's in the Bible. They went out from us, but had they went of us, they would have continued with us. No doubt continued with us, but they went out from us that they might not be, that they might be made manifest that they were not of us. I'm going to tell you, those of us that's really been born again, those that's really been saved and been hooked up by the Holy Ghost and fellowship, I don't believe it. Go back. Those are apostates, the Bible said. They never had it. Hey man, I preach that it tears their nerves up. I don't care. It's amazing how the Holy Ghost will expose false religion. I want to say, dear friend, you've got to believe in it. Hey, old time religion is more than just a memory. I'm going to tell you what, it was more than just a memory to Sammy Allen. It's more than just a memory to Preston Moore. It's more than just a memory to these dear men of God. Brother, you've stayed with us long. How long have you been here, Brother Doug? You just stayed with it, stayed with it. And as wonderful as these people are, there's been times it won't wonderful. But you stayed with it because you believed in it. Brother Bob, you stayed with it. Brother Daniel, my God, have mercy, son. How long you've been around. Oh, man, I remember you when King's Mountain was a pebble. Hey, man. Hey, man. But you've just stayed with it. I know the stories you laying on that grave begging for God's power from the man of God Percy Ray and you just stayed with it because you just didn't believe in Percy Ray but you believed in the God of Percy Ray I want to tell you what we need to believe in the God Oh, oh God, I'm so proud of you, son. I hadn't known you that well, but I'm watching you grow. And you've been getting to know you better. And I'm so proud of you. Son, you stay with it. You keep staying. I like the way you've taken stand where other folks weren't able to stand. And you just weathered the storms. Hey, God's raising another generation. But I'm telling you, hey, hey. Yeah, listen, listen. It's more than just a memory. Oh, preacher. I remember how it used to be. I wished it was like it used to be. Well, what are you doing now for God? Oh, well, that's why it ain't like it used to be. We got to remain at it. We got to stay, keep winning souls. You say, well, I don't believe, well, I don't much care whether you believe in it or not. That's what we're supposed to do. I mean, that's what we're supposed to do. I'm tired of, <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm going to get to, I'm tired of arguing about that. You can do what you want to with Calvin or Fred or Willard or the rest of them. But bless God, I believe Jesus saved whosoever will ask it. 
and I'm just going to keep preaching it. He saved enough drunks and changed their life around, and they're now preaching the gospel all over this country. I think we're going to keep trying to win them. I say we're going to keep trying to win them. Hey, man, hey, it's not, it's not just a movement. See, that's what it was with a lot of these guys. It was trendy 30 years ago. Trendy when the big crowds and super churches and all that stuff. Let me tell you something. It's never been about a super church. It's been about a supernatural God. If it's still about a supernatural God, you can have a crowd on Thursday night. Uh, amen. Up here, here in the middle of wherever we are. <laughs> we left Tennessee. I held on to my Confederate money. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. I probably wasn't supposed to say that. I'm sorry. I hadn't taken my medicine yet. <laughs> I got another 25, 30 minutes. Amen. Until medicine time. And then I'll see you on the other side. Amen. Hey. Hey. It's not just a movement. It's not. It's a message. It's a message from heaven. It's the word of God. Somebody just said, Preacher, what do you think the old time religion is? It's easy. It's simple. There it is. There it is. Everything within those black covers. Okay, I'll exclude the concordance and the maps. But I like them myself. And I really like the fact that my name's in there because it reminds me on that title page that belongs to Mary Goodman. It reminds me for the day that my name got written down in glory. I'm glad it's in the book. I want to say to you tonight, this old time religion is everything that's in this book and it's not anything that's not in this book. I don't care if it's trendy. I don't care if it wins the... Can I just preach? Amen. I don't care if it's in the Gospel Music Association top 10. I don't care if it made the top 10 sermons. That's acceptable. Praise God, the old time religion. By the way, I keep hearing about, let's just preach Jesus. Let's just preach Jesus. I'm sick and tired of this effeminate pink underwear preaching. We're raising it. Let's just preach the love of Jesus. Well, let me tell you about a Jesus that tore the house down. That drop kicked some false prophets through the goalpost of life. The little day he played football. Boom. Make not my house a den of thieves. Amen. I'm talking about the Jesus who called him a generation of vipers and hypocrites. I tell you, we wouldn't have Jesus in the average independent premillennial, non soup selling, but making Baptist church today. Uh, amen. Hey, I want to tell you what old time religion is not a style. Uh, amen. It's scriptural. Amen. Amen. Can I say something to you now? This is not something old time religion, singing, and shouting, and preaching. It's not just something we do. This is what we are. <laughs> this is what we are. Can't help it. We got something from the source he preached about a while ago. It just gets on us and it's going to come out. You can't hide it. Brother Rocky, one of the greatest preachers I ever known, but he gets up and starts to preach. And then, oh, you talking about it? He just get, but it's God all over him. Right. Hey. Uh, amen. And folks go to hitting off. What do you say, the preacher? It breaks out on us because right. it's what we are. As hungry as I am, I almost ate it a while ago. <laughs> you would have heard a stomach growl. Somebody say amen. But they called me. When they came and, and they, they said, Preacher, we could love to use you. And, our, and, and, and I said, well, brother, this church was started as an old-fashioned independent Baptist church. And I said, that's the way I took it and the trust and the call. And that's what she'll stay. But I appreciate you and I thank you. Too. But everything's been done. God's done it. And once you know that, I had a fellow call me a couple weeks later. I don't know whether he was. He said, uh, "Are you the senior pastor?" I said, "I reckon I'm not even the junior. My dad is Arnold, and I'm Barry." And he said, "Well, I want to know what you have to offer the community 
at your church. Well, I sniffed him right then and knew what I was dealing with. And I said, it was the old time my telephones, them kind. I loved them. I said, sir, what we offer, sir, preaching, singing, shout. And he said, no, 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 no. Preacher, what I, that's what y'all do. What I mean is what do services and what do you offer the public? Preaching, singing, shout. He said, sir, you're not understanding me. I said, no, sir, you're not understanding. We're an old-fashioned King James Bible preaching, Bible-believing, soul-winning, shouting, slobber-slinging, not blowing <laughs> altar going missionary yeah. Amen. sending Amen. Baptist what you're looking for sir this ain't Wendy's for you singles to come hunt doubles so you can make triples <laughs> bless God we ain't a bowling alley we ain't a Starbucks yeah, right. but I have been praying about a Krispy Kreme <laughs> hey May I say it requires an affirmation. It requires, hey, it reveals an identification. Paul, Paul remained, Paul remained because he just kept believing the Bible and he kept preaching. Hey, we need to be identified. I, I don't want to be ashamed of these old men of God. I'm not ashamed of this Bible. I'm not ashamed of these churches. That stood. I'm not ashamed of the men of God that didn't bow. I'm not ashamed. Thank God. I thank God for the God that can deliver the three Hebrew children and Daniel like the lions did and open up the Red Sea. Hey, we're not apologizing. Hey, man, we become too man friendly instead of God obedient. Oh me, we've learned that we need to get back to contending for the faith. In doctrine, it's a key word, key word for the ministry. And I learned it, and I'm still learning it, but it's balance. I believe in all kinds of biblical preaching. I believe in all kinds of acceptable spiritual music. The old hymns, the good gospel songs but I don't believe in anything that exalts the entertainer and the performer and it's more about the music and the soundtrack than it I just call soundtrack it's more about the soundtrack than it is about the Savior it's more about them putting on I've been with I've been with groups and there's good groups and you won't, you won't see no better than these here because none of them came here just to sell product none of them are here to sell anything. They're here to present Jesus. That's why the man booked them. But I've been with those. I've been on the cruises. And I've seen them dressed like a bunch of heathen animals when we stop at some of those resorts and then get up and want to sing to me about Jesus and what a change he makes that night. But I'm, I'm sorry. I believe we need to remain true to that Bible. Amen. I, I don't know if that went too far or not, but really, I, I won't stay 30 minutes now. I won't remember what I said anyhow. I love this. I love being old. Amen. Hey, it renders an identification. I want to say this tonight. I'm proud to be associated with Emmanuel Baptist Church. I'm, a, I'm proud. I, I, I want to be careful. Fellas, we may not always at times say everything eye to eye, but we've always felt that comradeship in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it's about somebody bigger than us. Bless your heart. I can't even grow it on that end. I look like a cue ball trying to find the eight ball. Somebody say amen. I have mercy. Can't do that no more. You got to know when to hold them, when to fold them, honey. Amen. Hey! It, it, it does matter who you associate with. I want to be associated with the old crowd. Amen. Why? Because I are one. I want to be associated with what I was raised in. I think it still works. It'll still build a church. We don't build it. Know how Jesus does. Number three, I got to hurry. I think I'm out of minutes. Hey, man, let me borrow. Who's ever preaching tomorrow night? I'm borrowing some of yours. Hey, hey, are you with me? I'm talking about, hey, remaining, it results in separation. Paul was left alone. I won't hit it too hard, but let me tell you something. 
we're treading where the saints have trod. Thank God this path is not new. But just stay with it. You, you won't have to quit them. They'll quit you. And they'll turn around and shoot at you just like the lawless. I love, I love law enforcement. By the way, when we were here five years ago, that Friday night, I got the call that Tim Brackeen, one of the young men been in our church 18 years, his daddy had been a missionary to Siberia, and Tim had been fatally shot in the line of duty in Shelby, North Carolina. It's the longest 10 hours home I've ever drove in my life and had to go straight to Charlotte that night. I went home, changed clothes, drove to Charlotte, and watched that body that was not really responding. And I want to say this tonight. These bunch of lawless idiots that's trying to defund and make fun. Let me tell you what, that's exactly what they've done in the Bible for years. Sinners don't want to repent, so they want to throw stones at those that preach the Word of God and against the Bible. And now we got the lawless getting, the, somebody help me. God bless the, hey, hey, thank God for the law enforcement and the military, and the military. Uh, amen, amen. Hey, what, what I'm trying to say is, is this. Hey, 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 results of, it results in separation. The compromisers have removed the ancient landmarks. And I, 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 gotta, I gotta stop. Let, let me just say this. What it used to be, it, wasn't, it was without question. But you know, they just, they, they bordered their lands with rocks and landmarks. And what's happened, the Bible said they come along and they just bump a little bit here. And then next year, you know, they bump it. He said, well, King James is a great translation. It's great. But there are places that could have been better translated. All them old songs in that book, they're good. But there are some that's just as inspired. And they're writing new stuff. Now, to understand it, it's got to be put in the language and in the vernacular of the, of the people. Since when do we let the people dictate what God's message says? I'm not going to start now with it. No, 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 no. We've got to change the message. You can't do that thundering preaching no more. Well, I want to say thank God. I'm reading those early, those early preachers in the 1700s, Whitfield and Finney and them could preach and folks hear them for five miles. Hey, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Wafted on the rolling tide, Jesus saves. I got to stop. And it responds. Remaining responds with a determination. Paul said, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Rebuke, reprove, and exhort with all long suffering. I'm done. I'm done. Preacher, I, I went over and I apologize. But I want to just end it with this. British gliders came in on June the 5th, the evening. Actually, June the 6th, early in the morning, and had to take the river, the river bridge at the River Orne. They came in by gliders so they wouldn't be detected. One third of them either died or could not were fit to fight. Second in command broke his leg and arm. But John Howard, the major, had been told by the general, you got to take that bridge and the Jerry's, the Germans are going to throw everything they got at you, but you got to hold until relieved. Hold until relieved. And all during the battles, he saw his men start falling, but they did take the bridge. And he only had one third of his entire company left. And they had to hold at least another three to four hours till the colonel and the beach troops could get to it. He said, Hold until relieved. He said, Many times he thought, I don't know how we'll do it, but we're going to hold. If it's just me, we're going to hold. Yeah until we're relieved and he said that morning as the blast from the German howitzer started retaliating he said through the through the noise of those guns he heard bagpipes and he looked back and coming down the road was the company coming from the beach and oh he stood there and he said all I could do was smile and just think sir I held unto relieved. And I want to say to you, dear friend, all we've got to do is hold until Jesus comes. Hold till relieved. Thank you, preacher. 
Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.